So I've finished my research for this report, but I'm going to need some help with the meme math. Ellie, mm, yada? Uh, Weird Al. If you've listened to pop music in the last five years, then it's more than likely you've heard auto tune. Or put you in a mansion, somewhere in Wisconsin. Antara's Autotune is a pitch correction plugin that's used to fix a singer's off-key vocals. It was designed by a former Exxon engineer named Andy Hildebrand, who was using sound waves to locate oil reserves under the sea floor. Hildebrand realized that the same autocorrelation technique used to find oil could also be used to correct a singer's unruly notes. And in 1997, he released Autotune to the World as a software plugin for audio editing. At first, the software would be used sparingly to fix the occasional off pitch sound. But in 1998, the producers of Cher's hit song Believe would be the first to use Autotune as an obvious vocal effect, producing a robotic, techno y sound. The producers went to great lengths to hide their off label use of Autotune, telling people that they had used a vocoder or a talk box, devices that were much more common at the time. Soon, other music producers using the Antares software found that if they tweaked the plugin settings just right, they could produce that sound we now distinctively know as Autotune. The story of Autotune would begin its most significant chapter in 2005, when Atlanta-based rapper turned Sanga T-Pain began using Autotune for his vocals. But where previous use of Autotune was an occasional affair, T-Pain would use it on every single song. In an industry where everyone tries to hide their imperfections, T-Pain's use of autotune was blatant. Everyone knew that T-Pain was being autotuned. But he was also a hit. And in the music industry, that's all that matters. Pretty soon other pop stars like Lil Wayne, Rihanna, and Snoop Dogg began experimenting with autotune, hoping to achieve that T-Pain effect. It had become a phenomenon, spawning entire albums filled with the autotune sound. The explosive popularity of autotune quickly Yo, Jamie, I'm gonna let you finish. But Kanye's album was the best autotune album of all time. Of all The explosive popularity of autotune quickly drove it into the second stage of a fad meme, overexposure. The effect was so overused that it became a joke, especially on the internet. Autotune was everywhere. Time, The New Yorker, and NPR all ran stories about the software, often raising the question of whether or not using autotune was dishonest. The word autotune became a curse word on music boards, used to slander vocals and recordings that seemed too good to be true. Autotune had become the psh, obviously photoshopped of the audio world. But haters will always hate. And after overexposure comes the third and most important stage of the autotune fad, parody and remix. To help us understand this stage, we've invited our visiting expert in the field of parody and musical lulls, Professor Al Yankovic. Thank you, Jamie Dubbs. As we all know, the web is a powerful vehicle for cultural propagation. So when an easy-to-use software plugin is paired with powerful internets, new features are discovered and explored. Do you want to sleep in? For how much longer? For example, who knew that cats, babies, and even Winston Churchill could sing? Lift up your heart. Oh, we'll come right. By applying the musical plugin to completely unmusical things on the internet, a new feature of this software was revealed. Everything became instantly fun. So while the first examples of parody found humor in its overuse, others found that the effect could be used to add a new dimension to their work. In fact, with all of this remix and mashup, the attention given to autotune would evolve from esoteric mockery into legitimate parody. While making fun of something is easy, parody requires a study of both technique and form before creating its own recontextualization. You must first invent the universe. Not only was autotune being embraced, it was being explored as a technique far beyond its intended use. Autotune would reach the pinnacle of self-parody when in 2009, T-Pain worked with Antares to develop an autotune iPhone app called I Am T-Pain, enabling anyone to sound like a pitch perfect robot. In June 2009, rapper Jay-Z released Death of Autotune, a diss track writing off autotune as a gimmick. 
And while he was hoping to put an end to autotune, the song only served to bring more attention to it. And yes, someone even autotuned Death of Autotune. While autotune everything and the T-Pain effect may seem like fat, that doesn't mean that autotune is going away. New technologies are often overused and exploited, peaking with parody, but eventually settling back into a state of equilibrium. equilibrium. What may seem played out now can go on to become part of the landscape later. When stereo sound was invented, artists abused the ability to pan from left to right. When turntablism was invented, DJs overscratched. The world is full of fads that create dissonance when they first appear. But perhaps autotune will return to a point closer to its intended use. Finding oil. Shot it!